One of the leading lights of the Charlton side in recent years has of course been former youth team player Scott Minto. Scott made his first team debut for the Addicts aged just 17 and has since clocked up a total of 185 appearances for the club, scoring a total of 8 goals. We've dipped into the video vaults to bring you one of Scott's finest efforts at home to Swindon Town at Upton Park in September 92. And Walsh. And Minto's going forward if Walsh can find him. It's a great run by Minto. Can he get in there? He has done. Oh, that's a great goal. That's a tremendous goal by Scott Minto. Charlton take the lead with a superbly crafted goal. Walsh with a through ball. Minto with the finish. And Charlton lead 1-0 on exactly 10 minutes here at Upton Park. Scott Minto with his first goal of the season and real quality there from the Addicts. As the Charlton squad prepared to take on the might of Blackburn Rovers in the fourth round of the FA Cup, our fly-on-the-wall camera crew blended seamlessly into the background to capture a typical day in the life of Charlton's ever-popular left-back. Talking the change room is your late. <laughs> no, half one, isn't it? One I'm actually early today for the actually first time. Actually early for the first time. Yes, yes. They, they, um, when I went in and spoke to them, they were saying that you're normally you're, uh, you're normally one of the later ones I'm to dead arrive. On the top. Yes, dead yeah, on the top. yeah, yeah. Not like the uh, the early birds who get here. Yeah. yeah. But no, yeah, made it at last. What time you set out? Long journey from Big, from Big and Hill. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad. It's not on a good day. It's 40 minutes, but obviously on a Saturday afternoon, it's, it's a bit of a nightmare. Yeah. So today I, I left about 25 past 12. And got here quite, yeah. quite early, really. Normal Saturday, was it? Just sitting around indoors for a while, getting up, reading the papers? Getting up, watching, well, not even getting up, just watching uh, telly in bed, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stewie Bauer. Yes, yeah. Um, no, just, just watching that Gazette of football and, mm. you know, in bed, basically. Uh, having a cup of tea and uh, a few bananas and that, and getting up about 12, really. Yeah, and then get all, then coming over. Then getting a shower, get, get coming over, yeah, yeah, and then getting here for about half one, yeah. Tickets out. Yeah. Yeah. Brought me up a cup of tea this morning. Uh, Number eleven, same position each week, I think. Yes. Hangers. Yes. Just sit next to a uh, bitch. Yep. No normal run arounds what you do, left boot on first or anything? No, none at all to be honest, I haven't got any sick positions at all. So just, I'm one of the last to get changed though, so just take your time and get it rough and jimmy. Sometimes it's good, sometimes obviously it's bad, but uh, yeah, it's no sick positions. We've been from the rest of the team, any of these uh, like this, one of the ones we uh, stay away from in the early warm-up? Um, Mickey Seven, Mickey <laughs> Seven you stay away from. Uh, Don't follow Steve Brown and Mark Robson. <laughs> Is that uh, like Matt Brownie, look even whiter. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, really, no, really. Just have a good laugh, once and uh, try and leave the team talk to as late as possible when we uh, it gets a bit serious. So, uh, yeah, just try and have a laugh, really. Sorry. Yeah. Look 
So Nicholas, I'm an England supporter. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Punch your love. Thank you. Oh, thank you. As the clock ticked down to the daunting clash with their big spending opponents from the Premiership, an air of nervous expectation hung over the Charlton team. As might be expected, the match was a total sellout. But that didn't stop these eager Charlton fans from getting a bird's eye view of the game. However, with John Moxon and his men from Ante along to cover proceedings, those fans unable to get a ticket would at least be able to catch up with the action on that evening's match of the day. Finally, it was five to three, the moment for the Charlton team to face their toughest challenge of the season so far. Our commentator for the match is Steve Dixon. It's FA Cup fourth round action here from the Valley as Charlton Athletic face Blackburn Rovers of the Premiership. Charlton Athletic of the NZ League First Division, Blackburn Rovers of the Premier League. And as the teams run out this afternoon, we see in our picture there Scott Minto, who has been the subject of our player profile feature this afternoon. Their cameras have been following him all afternoon. And he lines up in a Charlton side that shows a couple of changes from the team that beat Barnsley here at the Valley 2-1 last week. Darren Pitcher returns to the lineup this afternoon. He's been missing from the last couple of games due to suspension. And Colin Walsh is also back in the uh, 14 this afternoon. He's on the subs bench alongside Gary Nelson. The Blackburn Rovers team is packed with star players and internationals. No more so, of course, than Alan Shearer, who will be the player that Charlton will want to watch out for this afternoon, more than most, perhaps. But look out as well for David Batty in midfield, the uh, recent big money signing from Leeds, that'll be a very important battle between him and Darren Pitcher in the midfield, and of course in goal they have the uh, former Southampton keeper Tim Flowers who won his first cap for England in the Tour of America against Brazil this summer. Quite a number of Premiership clubs have already fallen in the FA Cup this season, in the third round stage Everton were beaten by Bolton Wanderers, Southampton went out to Port Vale and of course Liverpool were beaten last Tuesday at Anfield by Bristol City. Let's see if Blackburn Rovers are to join them as the referee, Mr Alan Flood from Stockport, gets the game underway with Charlton Athletic wearing red shirts, white shorts and red socks attacking the south stand end and Blackburn Rovers in their famous blue and white half shirts with blue shorts and blue socks and there's no touch for David Bassey and also for Graham Lasseau. Batty again, and that's a rash challenge coming in from Kim Grant. That's the first free kick of the afternoon. Flowers with the goal kick. Cleary edges it back to Mick Salmon. And Lieben got up there. Robson getting it forward, and there goes Kim Grant. Marker gets the challenge in, but that'll be a corner to Charlton. First corner of the game. Henningberg swooped it in. Chapel with the header away. This is Minto. Sherwood got a foot in, but it's bounced for Robson. And Robson weaves his way out of the midfields. And Wilcox got in well for Blackburn. Stuart Ripley is dispossessed by Robson, but Batty gets in and gets it back to Ripley, who only passed a fitness test at about 11 o'clock this morning. McCleary did well there, and Pitcher had to put it out for a corner. McCleary wins the first set, but not the second, and the referee carries on. And the 
again. Pitcher got in well with the header. This time Mike Salmon dives to play mitts to stop it going out for a corner. Charlton getting in very quickly there. They've obviously fired up for this one. Leebone getting on the end of that. Leebone's in now. Oh, there's a hand out by Marker. And what does the referee do about that? He does nothing. Leebone not very pleased with that. Marker certainly shoved him down. The referee possibly could have thought there was a bit of pushing and shoving from both players. But look, there's a hand out from Nicky Marker. Leebone went over. And on, a, on, a, on another day, that could well have been a penalty. Ripley. And now Shearer's across. Oh, and a good challenge there by Pitcher again getting the block in and now Mark Robson with space on that far side, the right hand side to bring the ball away for Charlton and he's got Leeburn in and Marcus across the cover, throw in to Charlton here's Robson again, deep cross towards the far post and I think it was Sherwood who just got the flick on the ball to get it away could have been Marker, but it's a corner to Charlton Robson with the corner. Flick on from Brown. Leeburn's in there. Flowers with the save and Leeburn claiming that his shirt was pulled. And Carl Leeburn again angry with the referee. Robson with the corner. Brown got the flick on and Leeburn at the far post and definitely had his shirt pulled there by Tim Sherwood. Blackburn perhaps lucky to get away with that. Charlton had one good claim for a penalty turned down ready. Would that also have been a second one? Leaving with a flick on. That'll be a throw into Charlton. He in there again. Oh, and Flowers had to gather it at the second attempt. As Charlton again pressurised their Premiership opponents. Pitcher with a good block this time, Grant's in, and he sweeps it across the face of the goal, and there's no one at the far post, but Robson can keep it in now. Charlton have got their illustrious opponents on the rack here, Robson showing neat control. It'll be a throw. This is Brown. Pardew. Trying to find a shooting chance, it'll come for Pitcher, will it? Now McCleary, and now Brown again. Charlton retaining possession well. The ball delivered deep towards Leeburn. The chance now for Pitcher. Oh, well struck, oh, off the post. And now Robson with the cross, and Leeburn's in there. And Kevin Moran gets the ball away. That's the closest we've come to a goal this afternoon. Darren Pitcher striking the ball from something like 20, 23 yards outside the box. Flowers was beaten, but it cannon back into play off the post. McCleary then with the free kick for Charlton. Leeburn again the target. Got up well. Leeburn with the shot. Oh, and inches wide. Flowers again was beaten, but the ball also beat that far post. And Charlton here are in the ascendancy. It's Blackburn Rovers, second in the Premier League who have got their backs to the wall and that man there, Alan Shearer, has hardly had a look in Nelson the substitute surrounded by Blackburn players, has found Robson two men to, come to close him down Pardew's in there didn't get enough power behind the header and Flowers was able to claim it easily Pardew appeared through a ruck of players there, but couldn't get any power behind the header. We're into the last few moments of the game here, as Steve Brown comes to take the throw in for Charlton on this near side of the field. Charlton will have to do something quickly if they're going to win it now. Here's Nelson, and there indeed is the final whistle. It's finished all square here at the Valley. The Blackburn players, it would seem, are happy enough with that scoreline. 
Charlton, perhaps a trifle disappointed, but at least there'll be a money-spinning replay at Ewood Park. It's been a marvellous match here at the Valley, and one in which Charlton probably had the upper hand, but it's finished here in the FA Cup fourth round. Charlton Athletic, nil. Blackburn Rovers, nil. Afterwards, our on-the-spot reporter, John Fuller, asked highly delighted co-manager Steve Grit to talk us through the game cup fever from start to finish there Steve yeah I mean I'm obviously I'm delighted for the club that we've got another crack at it um, we'll be in the draw on Monday um, I'm disappointed we haven't actually won it on the day I thought you know on the, of the two sides I thought we were the better of the two John also spoke to frustrated Rovers hit man Alan Shearer Alan your first trip to the valley what do you think of it yeah it's coming along very nicely um, we're building a nice team here and um, we nearly had the result today but not quite um, we got another bite of the cherry in fact, it was a typical cup battle, wasn't it? Both defence played really well today. Yeah, they did. It was a very scrappy and horrible game to play in, to be honest. I mean, there wasn't a lot of chances flying around. Um, and I think we'll certainly look forward to the replay more than them. It seems to be into these replays at the moment, and you pulled some the other week. Yeah, it's important you don't get beat. Um, we've come in, we, as I said, we've, we've not conceded any goals, and uh, we'll look forward to the replay. Alex Ferguson was quoted the other week as saying it's better playing a Premier side because you know what's coming. It's not easy coming down to Division 1, is it? Certainly not. It's not coming down, um, easy coming down to any division. Um, and give Charlton credit today that they've played well and battled hard. Maybe could have nicked it at times, but they, they haven't. Um, it was a very, uh, I thought, a very boring game with, with no, no goals in it. But um, there you go. Another game to come. Blackburn keeper Tim Flowers also took time out to talk to us. Tim, first one, so you, we worked it out you're the only player on the Blackburn side who's actually played at the Valley before. Yeah, that's right. Um, I remember it quite well, actually. We, we lost 1-0. I, I think it was Mike Flanagan who possibly scored. Um, it was in the in my Wolves days early on. I think I was about 17. Um, but the, I mean, the Valley's certainly changed since then, but it's, you know, it's nice for, for, for Charlton to be back in their proper home again. A great game. You are in the action most of the time today. Yeah, it was a good game. I mean, we knew what to expect. I mean, we realised we weren't naive enough not to think that Charlton weren't going to have a right go at us, which they did, and they acquitted themselves very, very well. And they've got some talented players. Um, yeah, I had a little bit to do, and it was, I mean, the pitch was a bit dry, and it made for a sort of fast and furious football, and Charlton fully deserved their, uh, their replay. As we said earlier, it really was a back fours game today, wasn't it? Both defences hanging in there. That's right. I mean, prob probably ours slightly more than theirs, I thought. Um, I mean, Mike wasn't really called into action much at all. I mean, he looked nice and confident. Uh, but they're, they're back for, uh, we've put them under periods of pressure, but not, not as consistent as we might have liked. But our lads held out well. They had a lot of set pieces, a lot of free kicks and corners around the box. And uh, I, thought, I thought we justified taking them back to Ewood. One close one with the crossbar? Oh, the post, yeah. I had it covered. <laughs> no, it, um, it was a good shot. He tried to sort of bend it into my left-hand corner. Um, and I, I was very, very close to it, so I knew it wasn't going to if it was going to go in like it, it was going to be very, very close. Uh, but I just had a quick glance round and I, s I saw it and heard it hit the post, so I was relieved. And then uh, it just went at a bit of an acute angle, so the man following in struggled to get on the end of it. That's great. Well, we look forward to seeing you in two weeks' time back at Ewood Park. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you very much. And as I say, it's always nice to play at the Valley. The, the fans are fantastic and uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. Finally, John Fuller caught up with the subject of our special mini feature, Scott Minto. Looked like you enjoyed yourself today. Yeah, it was a good game. I mean, if you can't enjoy against someone like Blackburn, then you just won't enjoy the game at all. They'll back four. We're playing very well today. Yourself, Steve Brown, McCleary and Phil Chappell. Yeah, I think that's shown, especially at the Valley. Where we've, I think we've got the best defensive record in our division. I think it's shown today. You seem to always enjoy going forward. I mean, I remember about two seasons ago, it was left wing and midfield, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. I started off in the first team, uh, left midfield. Although at the time I was playing in the youth team, left back. But I've, I think left back's probably my best position, probably our most effective there going down the wings and overlapping, so uh, I'm happy there. It's been a typical day, as you know, we've been following you around today. You know, your question, where do you see yourself going from here? I know you always want to stay with Charlton, but, you know, you're young, you want to go forward a lot, isn't it? Uh, to the bar, that's where I'm going straight after here. Um, but after that, I don't know, I mean, I really don't know. My contract's up at the end of the season. Um, I'll have to see what happens, I really don't know. I, I do love it at Charlton, I've been there since, since school, and, um, you know, ideally I wouldn't like to go, but circumstances might say otherwise I don't know.